on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the response to the hungry and the poor, that we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. Hearts for peace in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. Spirit to guide, that you center our lives in the water and the word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way.
Greetings, sisters and brothers. The title of this week's message is The Problem of Evil, and it's based on this week's gospel, which is Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30 and 36 through 43. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So sisters and brothers, in today's gospel, Jesus uh, wrestles with this theological issue of the problem of evil. In theology, that word itself means study of God. In theology, uh, there's this word theologians have come up with called theodicy, theodicy. And that word means the problem of evil. In other words, if God is good and God created everything, where did evil come from and what purpose does it serve? So uh, Salve Regina University, where I teach, has an entire course, a whole semester, three classes a week on this topic, the problem of evil. And when I was a college student many years ago, I took a course on this, the problem of evil. And in the course I took, we focused mostly on the work of two great thinkers in the Christian tradition, my own Martin Luther uh, and St. Augustine, okay? So I'll start with Luther. So Luther was born 1482, lived to 1546. That was considered the late medieval period, and Luther was shaped by his times. He was a medieval thinker. Uh, in terms of good and evil, for him it was like Star Wars. It was very either or, black, white, good versus evil, God versus the devil. And in his late medieval thinking, Luther even thought of the devil as personified and felt like it was this, this scary looking being. And Luther felt really a battle going on inside himself between God and the devil, between good and evil. One time he felt so tormented that by the devil as he was doing his work at his desk that he picked up his inkwell and he threw it at the devil and said, Satan, be gone. But Luther did say, in this battle between God and the devil, goodness and evil, he said, as difficult as it might feel, don't worry, God will always win. Um, Augustine had a very different understanding of this issue of theodicy. And Augustine lived uh, much more than a thousand years before Luther. He was born in 354 and lived to the year 430 CE. And Augustine doesn't talk about good versus evil. He talks about good and the privation of the good. So he, he says that evil does not really exist per se, but there are there's good and the ultimate good is God. And then there are lesser goods. Um, so there's like a spectrum of very, very good over here and way not good on this other end of the spectrum. And I remember being born and raised in the Lutheran church when I took this course in college. I very much lined up with Luther in this very black-white thinking. Um, and I was at the same time as I was taking this course on theodicy, I was also taking a course on the Holocaust. It was a whole history of prejudice and racism, and it culminated in a, this in-depth study of the Holocaust. And it was such a depressing class um, that, that talked about the evil that 
human beings have done to other human beings that I thought about dropping that course many, many times throughout the semester. And I myself, from taking that course, actually struggled with depression because it was just this, this seeing this evil, this depths of evil in humanity was so overwhelming and depressing. So to me, Luther's idea made a lot more sense. It was the battle between goodness and evil. And I'm looking at Hitler and the Nazi regime, and I'm saying, come on, Augustine, that's not just some lesser good. That's like real evil. That's like blatant evil, not some lesser good. So I, I lined up as a young woman in my early 20s more with Luther. But I have to tell you, over the years, um, I've grown in my thinking about this issue. And now I would say I actually am more lining up with Augustine's train of thought. And I'll tell you a couple reasons why. So maybe 12 years ago, when I was still working on my doctoral degree, I was getting it at the um, Lutheran Seminary in Philadelphia. So I would go there for week-long intensive classes. And my son lived in Delaware, about an hour from Philadelphia. So I would always stop and visit him on the way to or from my class. And so about 12 years ago, I stopped to visit my son, Zach, and we got in this debate about the problem of evil. And um, I came out very black and white, kind of on Luther's, with Luther's understanding. And he was much more Augustinian, um, saying, no, there's no such thing really as evil. There are just lesser forms of good. And and I talked about, well, what about Hitler and Nazi Germany? How is that just some lesser good? Come on. You know, that's blatantly evil. And he and I got into this big debate, and it so upset me that I remember driving home from Delaware, six-hour drive, fuming, fuming, and just in my head and going over our, our conversation and our debate for six hours and so frustrated with my son, probably because he was challenging my way of looking at things, and he was right. And sometimes when people challenge us and their way of thinking challenges our old way of thinking, we feel threatened and we get angry but I had six hours to wrestle with this, and um, I've, I've come closer to his way of thought. Second thing that changed my way of thinking was reading Albert Einstein. And Einstein says that evil or sin is actually the absence of God. And since we know God's never really absent, even though we or many people might think God's absence, that means that there never is pure evil because God's never really absent. And it means that the more we open ourselves, the more we live in God's presence and in communion with God, then the further along we are on that spectrum um, in terms of God who is good. Uh, so... Um, I also must confess that my understanding that there's no pure good and pure evil and it's not so black and white and dualistic as Luther had said, um, I also came to that conclusion because of all my years um, of ministry, all my life experience. I've now been ordained for 34 years. That's a lot of time. And I've realized that you know, often there are people that seem so saintly and we say such good people, and then I see them doing horrible things, horrible things that we would call evil. So I'm like, how can this really good person be doing such awful stuff? And then there are people that we might say, oh, these are bad people, 
who do these amazingly good things. And so it leaves us realizing that there is good and evil in all of us and that the real battle is not out there, it's in here um, within ourselves as we turn and turn and turn. And remember that word repentance means turning as we turn more and more away from those things that are not of God and turn more fully toward God, then that is the goal, if you will, for our human lives. So let's look at today's gospel. Jesus in today's gospel tells us a story of kind of good and evil. And he says, um, it's a parable, and he says, I'm going to read it, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat. Among, along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned and gather the wheat into my barn. So we're told that Jesus' disciples, a paragraph later, say to him, Lord, help us explain this parable to us. And so Jesus says, the sower of the seed, the farmer, the gardener, is the son of man, which is the name for Jesus himself. The field in which he sows his seed is the world. The good seed that he sows is the children of the kingdom, of the reign of God. The weeds, he says, are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of ages. The reapers are angels. And the weeds are causes of sin. And that's what will get burned up, the causes of sin. And then he uses this phrase that's used, found only once in the Gospel of Luke and six times in the Gospel of Matthew. They will be burned up and they will be in a place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Interesting. Uh, and he says, but the righteous, the ones who live God's way, will shine like the sun in the reign of God. Let the one with ears hear. And sisters and brothers, this um, reminds me of what I read in my morning prayer just a couple of days ago. I'm reading the book of Acts. And in the book of Acts, it tells the story of early Christianity and the apostles. After Jesus has ascended, his followers say, now what? How do we live out our Christian faith, our, this brand new faith? How do we live it out without Jesus here present with us? And so in Acts chapter 5, the um, apostles get in trouble with their fellow Jews, because the Jews, and remember, Christianity comes out of Judaism. In the beginning, it was considered a movement within Judaism. But Judaism, like all of us, you know, said, no, this is what we're about, and had their 
way of thinking and some new ideas, something new coming in, see, is threatening. Like my son's theodicy was threatening to me. And so I was being threatened by it. I responded with anger and defensiveness, okay? So many of the, the Jews who did not accept Christ in that first century responded to this Christian movement with, with anger and, and oppression of this new movement, the Christians. And so the Sanhedrin, the Council of 70 Jewish Leaders, um, that's the council, right, that voted that, that Jesus needed to die. He was too much of a threat. But they also uh, were about to make that same judgment in the terms in terms of the apostles. And then this very wise old Jewish leader, uh, this Rabbi Gamaliel, stands up. And he changed their minds. And he said, listen, brothers, he said, um, we've seen many prophets rise up, many different messiahs, people who claim to be the messiah. He said, and they have a little following of disciples. And then they die, and all that they had taught turns to nothing. And that's because it was not of God. He says, so if these apostles of this Jesus are not of God, it will go the same way with them. Um, if they're not of God, then, then what they're trying to build, what they're trying to do, will not last so it'll just fizzle out. So we don't have to fight against it. But he says, if, if this new idea, if this new teaching that they're bringing about is of God, and we try to stop it, then we will be opposing the will of God. And heaven forbid we do that. So he said, so leave, leave the, let them be, leave them alone, and time, the test of time, it will bear itself out. Time will show whether this new movement is of God, and if it is, it will be lasting, and if it's not of God, it will not last. What wisdom. And Jesus in today's gospel pretty much says the same thing. Nope, let the weeds and the wheat grow together, and at the end of the ages, the truth will be, will be told, right? The, the things that are not of God, those, those, um, those uh, seeds, the, uh, those, those weeds, those causes of sin will be exposed and they'll be burned up, but the things that are of God will be lasting, are eternal, and will remain. Imagine if we followed this advice and we did not judge others with new ideas and we said, no, let's let them, let them do their thing and grow. And if they are of God, they will, they will last. And we don't want to be on that side opposing some new thing God might be doing through these people. And if they're not of God, they won't last. Nothing will remain. It will turn to nothing. Think of this. So the, the early Christian movement was a completely new idea, a new thing growing out of Judaism, clearly of God because it's lasted 2,000 years. But then very shortly after that, the Christians had another new uh, thought come in that, that they found threatening, and that was, well, what about non-Jewish Christians. What about Gentiles? The Gentiles are hearing about this Jesus guy, and they're starting to believe, do we allow Gentiles, non-Jews, there was, you know, some racism going on, do we allow people of a different race, of different ethnicities, of previously different religion to become part of our Christian tradition? And that was a threatening new idea, but they went with it. They followed Gamaliel's idea, and they followed it. And thanks be to God, because now Christianity has grown. 
And within my own lifetime, I remember when the church wrestled with the ordination of women. There were some people who said, no, this is of the devil, this is evil, this is a bad thing. And there are others who said, no, this is a, this is a good thing God is calling us to. And thanks be to God, that new idea was, was allowed to exist. And now today, there's more women clergy than, than male clergy. Um, and then, much more recently, the whole LGBTQ uh, movement, um, which some people say, oh, this is a wonderful, new, more inclusive, expansive thing. This is good. This is of God. And there are others who think this is not of God. Well, let them be. Let them continue. And if it is of God, it will remain. And if it is not of God, it will not. And the point, I think, of this gospel is that we, human beings, are not the judge. There's only one judge, and that is God. So let's not judge others for, as Gamaliel said, we might even be fighting against the new thing that God is trying to do. Finally, uh, many commentators say that this gospel about the wheat and the weed or the good and the evil both coexisting together is never something we're supposed to look at others uh, with judgment, but rather we're to look right here because we all have both wheat and weeds, good and not so good, in us. And... That's the place that we are to do the judgment. That's the place where we are to look within and hopefully continue turning, turning, turning on that spectrum away from those things which lead us that are not of God and more and more towards those things that are of God. And hold on, as Luther says, to that hope that no matter what, God, good, will always win. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, fill your hearts and souls and minds and lives with Christ Jesus, our Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing Share the presence of your love. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a foretaste of all that is. When all creation shares this feast with you. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one.
Thanks be to God. 